Hello and welcome to another DCS H64D Reference 8 video. I wanted to cover a few more things. With the release of today's patch, there have been some additions to the startup procedure that we covered in the previous video. Coming down, when we go to the flight page to set our low altitude, first we will have to click the radar altimeter to enable it. Take a few seconds for it to warm up. Then we'll go ahead and set our low altitude. Down at this page, whenever we go to the ASC page where we would normally just arm the chaff, now we're going to go to the ability page. Then we're going to arm the chaff and then set the RLWR to on so that we can get our audio cues. Radar, six searching. Like that. Just ensure that your RLWR volume is on. Turn this down a bit so she's not interrupting. Next, I wanted to cover how to use the lock on after launch to engage laser sources other than your own whether it be from a ground JTAC or an AI drone running AFAC or even other human pilots that are going to be lazing for you. The first thing you'll want to ensure is that your Hellfire Seekers are looking for the correct code. So coming down, going to the code page, we can see our laser rangefinder designator is currently set to channel alpha, which is broadcasting out 1688 frequency. So we're going to move down to channel Foxtrot just because we're going to be using George up front. So he'll probably try to laze and this is to ensure that we can make sure that the Hellfire is tracking the JTAX code, which is going to be the default of 1688. If you wanted to set up a custom frequency, you'd simply need to click Frequency, choose the channel you wanted to change, so in this case Romeo, input the four-digit frequency, hit Enter, and it would be saved on that channel. To choose which channel the seeker is going to be looking for, come across to Channel, and then choose it from this list. We're going to leave it Alpha, as I said, we're using the AI JTAC and they're always set to 1688 by default. Coming back to the weapons page, we can select the missiles. Here we'll see that our laser rangefinder designator is on Foxtrot and the missile is going to be seeking for Alpha primary and the alternate is Bravo. So there's no way that our missiles should be able to track our own laser even if it is on. The next thing you're going to need is the target's coordinates. If you're operating with a human counterpart, whether they're using combined arms and on the ground or if they're up in an aircraft capable of lazing, they're going to have to use their specific system to find and transfer the coordinates to you either through voice chat or through text chat. For example, if you're in the Apache and you're lazing for someone, you would of course be up in the front seat, find the target, laze it, make it a target point like we discussed in the previous video, and then you can simply go to the course page, I have the targets at the moment, but then select the point you want, or rather you don't have to select it, but just look at it, and then you have the coordinates here you can give them, or you can click the right push button next to it and then you'd have the lat long as well. Coming back out of this, we're going to be using a AI AFAC up ahead. Do keep in mind if you're using an AI source JTAC, if you have rockets on your bird and the targets are even remotely soft, they may request a rocket run and not laze for you. So in order to avoid that and ensure that all they're going to give you is laser designated targets, you can just load up nothing but hellfires. That's a way to just kind of work around it. All right, I've already checked in with them, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the brief. Do keep in mind that when you're getting your nine lines from them, that the most important thing on it for you is gonna be the coordinates. Ready to copy. Orbit Alright, so as you heard there, the coordinates is it's going to be Bravo Alpha 703145. That's a six digit format, and as we discussed in the previous video, we need an eight digit format. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go down add, make it a target point, go target ident. We're not going to worry about an ident code or free text at the moment, and it's already Bravo Alpha, so we don't need to change that. We're going to input the 703 and then add a zero to make that four digits as opposed to three, and then enter the one, four, five, zero. Enter, we're not gonna change the altitude, so go ahead and enter again. Now our target point has been made out there near our range. Coming down, we're gonna go to the route, select direct, make sure that we're in nav, that way we'll see our line to confirm. Go to point, since that's my only target that I've created, I'll go ahead and hit T, one, enter. Now we can see our line headed out to our target that we have. 
go ahead and make that my acquisition source as well. Looking up, we can see that we now have the home plate for our destination and the cross dashed for our acquisition source. All right, so now all we have to do is fly out there and engage. Also, by making that our destination, we get the range to it. So I'm gonna try to fly and put myself just within the minimum launch distance for the Hellfires, and then I will pop back over to you. All right, so I went ahead and moved up to about 7.5 kilometers from T-01 out here. I've contacted my AI JTAC, had him turn on the lays, told him that I spotted it, and I gave him the call that I'm inbound, got cleared hot by him, so now I can engage. Make sure that if you are using an AI JTAC that you follow through the radio commands until you get cleared hot. If you engage prior to that, if you just you know have him turn on the laser and then try to engage, he'll call an abort and he'll turn off the laser, your missile won't track. So follow through the radio menus all the way until you get cleared hot. I went ahead and set George up with the lock on after launch with a higher trajectory. If you're operating in multiplayer with someone up front, of course, they can do this. If you're in single player, you can hop up front and do it yourself, but I'm gonna show you how to do it with George up front real quick. So as you can see down here on the TSD, George is currently looking directly out my left over here. And even though we're lined up, I've got the acquisition sources T01. If I try to tell George to fire, I'm pressing the weapons, release authorization, nothing's happening. Even if I, with my master arm up, was to select missile, switch it to direct norm, I try to fire myself, nothing happens. What you need to do is you need to have George target in that area. So I'm going to go ahead and look up, have him target over there. He's leaving. He's leaving. All right, so now I've got my list on the left. So if you're trying to engage from low level like I am, even if you can't, you're not wanting to stay high enough to lay, you might have to pop up high enough for him to get a target in that general area. So I'll go ahead and cycle down. If you remember, the APCs are the friendly units from before, and it's actually trucks that are on the far side. So go to the F-10 map real quick. We're currently sitting here. These are the APCs. Our targets are the trucks that are on the other side. We can't actually see those, or rather he can't. So I'm going to just select an APC in that direction to get him to aim over there. And now I will tell him to fire. There we go. One off the rails. Now even if he was to try to laze those APCs, if he could see them, the missile is not going to track his laser again because it is not searching for that code. It's searching for the JTAX phase frequency which is 1688 so we're flying over the friendly vehicle they should be back there somewhere and instead we're headed towards our trucks which is our intended target all right so we hit our truck shooting over the friendly vehicles go ahead and call my off Alright, go ahead and call another inbound. Colt, one, one, might be inbound. Colt, one, one, continue. Get him to turn on his laser. Colt, one, one, laser on. Again, you need, to, on. you need to follow all the way through the ra radio Colt, one, chat. One, spot. If I was to fire right now, he would call an abort. So you need to go all the way through to your end. One, one, in from the northwest. Hold, one, one, clear hot. Now I can engage. Again, if you're working with a human, you just coordinate with them, make sure that they're lazing, and then engage. But with the AI, you need to make sure you're cleared hot first. All right, hopping up to the front seat now. We're coming over, we just need to make sure that our acquisition source is set to our T01. And then looking ahead, we can see that we already have the box because we're pointed in the correct direction, and we simply have to rifle.
All right, that covers everything I wanted to talk about regarding the lock-on after launch today. I did want to mention a workaround until the laser spot track comes online. If you wanted to find where someone's lasing with your TADs, just make sure that your seeker head is searching for the code they're using, and then you can make your acquisition source the seeker. Uh, you'll have to be in the front seat and then just slave your TADs to it like you would if you were slaving it to a target point or pilot's helmet cursor, and you'll be able to see what your Hellfire is looking at. Hopefully you found some information in this video useful, and as always, thank you for your time and attention.